Go ahead. Hi, I'm Pancho Kinney. I'm a member of the Homeland Security Advisory Committee, Southwest Border Task Force, for the Department of Homeland Security. I've got about 20 plus years of experience, not all of it continuous, along the southwest border. Beginning in the early 1990s when I was a U.S. Army Major Station at Fort Ord, California. And as a planner for an infantry division, one of my roles was to respond to requests for military support of law enforcement agencies um, along the U.S.-Mexico border. And we probably had about a half dozen missions that I was involved with, ranging from trying to assist local law enforcement agents in detecting marijuana cultivation in rural areas to providing LPOP missions, and that is basically observation personnel to assist the Border Patrol in detecting intrusions into the U.S. border, or merely establishing a force presence along the U.S.-Mexico border to dissuade um, would-be illegal migrants or drug traffickers from using that particular portion of the terrain. And how would you say that the uh, border has changed in the last two years? In terms well, of the violence? Well, in terms of the violence, I don't know if there's really been a significant change in the last couple of years, because if you take a look at cities like El Paso or San Diego, they're some of the safest cities and communities in the entire United States. And there's been a lot of concern about crossover violence or spillover violence from Mexico into the United States. But the reality is, I think, because of the rule of law and the the deep presence of law enforcement, I mean, just a federal, state, local, um, or tribal along the United States, and particularly the rule of law, that you don't have the same kinds of violence in the United States that you see in Mexico. That being said, the Mexican drug trafficking organizations are present, and according to drug enforcement agencies and other federal drug law enforcement agencies, they are responsible, the prime movers of most of the cocaine, marijuana, methamphetamines in over 200 communities in the United States. The big difference is they don't practice the same violence that they do in Mexico. They're here in the United States because they want to make money, and they realize that if they act outrageously or in ways that really are offensive or dangerous to the United States that the full power of U.S. law enforcement, both federal, state, municipal, tribal, all of it is going to come down on them and interrupt with their businesses. So I think that the U.S. communities are pretty safe. Uh, that being said, there are incidences of kidnapping, human trafficking, and violence, particularly uh, by predators on, on poor people who really can't defend themselves. And in some instances, underneath the radar screen here, because they're not, they're not legally present in the United States. So you're saying that one of the issues that's arisen is there has been uh, predatory targeting of undocumented immigrants in, in well, this country. Well, that's true, but I think, I think it's, it's mostly by the, drug, by the human smuggling organizations that they bring them in in many instances. They'll hold them hostage or they'll kidnap them, they'll hold them captive, or they'll practice violence against them to make sure that they get paid for the job of bringing them across the border. But I, I don't necessarily think that, that violent exploitation of migrants is being practiced uh, on a widespread basis by um, employers or individuals in the United States. Do you see much targeting of American citizens for acts of violence? I can't really speak to that. I haven't, um, you know, what I do is, what I know is what I've read, and I can't say that I've read too much about Americans being targeted. Clearly, there have been a couple of incidences in Mexico where I think it was ICE agents were, uh, were attacked, and I don't know whether they were targeted or whether they were just happenstance. Incidences. But that was in Mexico. That was in Mexico. So, would you... Uh, overall say, you, you mentioned that the border is, is safe in general. What, what do you say to a lot of this rhetoric uh, regarding the, the border being a war zone uh, on the American side? Well, I don't think it's that? true. I mean, if you take back and look, um, there was a movie born in East L.A. about 25 years ago. Remember that one? Where they had just waves of people coming over the border at dusk and running across highways and things like that. That's no longer happening. Barriers, fences, they make a big difference, particularly in urban areas where the, for the time to get across and hide in an urban environment is measured in seconds or, or dozens of yards. Then the, the presence of, of the physical presence of agents and surveillance systems and physical barriers make a big difference. Uh, I'm sure that, it, that if you take a look at Smuggler's Gulch, for example, in the Tijuana San Diego corridor, where a massive fence and landfill project was, was put into place about two years ago, that that significantly cut down on trafficking between the two areas as, as well. So I think the combination of greater situational awareness, greater presence by the Border Patrol, more effective border control operations, and the integration of, of barriers and virtual fences is making the border a more difficult 
place to penetrate by people who want to come into the United States illegally or bring illegal um, substances into the United States, and it's increasing the safety of the communities, border communities along the U.S.-Mexico border. All right. Thank you very much. Good to go? Mm-hmm.